To the north of Egypt, the Hittites were preparing for war. They intended to take advantage of the young and inexperienced boy king. Ramesses was about to face the biggest challenge of his life. You have two superpowers, each one trying to grab bits from the other, and eventually they're going to clash. By the fifth year of Ramesses' reign, the massive Hittite army moved into Egypt's territories, advancing toward the town of Kadesh. As the crossroads for trade with the Near East, Kadesh was of extreme strategic importance. Ramses II realizes that the battle for the area of Kadesh, for this border, is the battle that will eventually decide which of these two empires will be the leaders of the world in the entire century, in the entire 13th century. Here was the opportunity Ramesses had been waiting for. It was a chance to prove his power and might to the world. There was only one problem. Egypt was not ready for war. Ramesses needed an army quickly. He mobilized not just Egyptian soldiers, but other subjects of his empire, including Nubians and Libyans. The primitive bronze weapons of the Egyptian forces were soon to be pitted against the Hittites' iron armory. The odds didn't look good. I can't imagine what it must have been like to be a soldier in Pharaoh's army. First of all, in all likelihood, you don't want to be there. You've been conscripted. Secondly, you're rather poorly fed, you're rather poorly clothed, you have a spear, or if you're lucky, a bow and arrow, and that's it. You are expected to give your all. Soon Ramesses' army was ready. The Pharaoh's scribes also came along to record what the Pharaoh was confident would be a glorious victory. He had all the self-confidence that can go with being young. He thought that everything was doable. He thought that problems would not exist. He probably thought that compromises wouldn't need to be made. You could just go out and do it and get it. Finally, the 20-year-old king set off with his army, leading an advance guard out of the lush Nile Delta into the scorching heat of the Sinai Desert. The figure he cut at the helm of his army was impressive. I can imagine that he had a great deal of power and authority. He was very strong and muscular. He was himself about five foot eight, five nine. That's about not all that much, four inches or so taller than the average Egyptian man, but taller nevertheless. He had red hair, which was a very unusual feature in ancient Egypt, and it set him apart. The Egyptian army surged across the desert through Israel and Lebanon. A few miles from Kadesh, Ramesses and his advance guard made camp and waited for the rest of the army to catch up. When Ramses established this camp, he obviously was not thinking that there was going to be a battle anytime soon. This was a time to stop, have a picnic, talk about life in general, and await, maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks later, some kind of a battle which, of course, the Egyptians knew they would win. But things weren't going to be so easy. We know from scribal accounts that the inexperienced pharaoh was about to be the victim of a dangerous trap. There were two Bedouin in the desert who were brought in by Ramsey's soldiers and interrogated and Ramses or whoever said, where's the king of the Hittites? And they said, oh, he's, he's way off there. Don't worry about him. He's far away. What Ramses didn't realize was that his informants were Hittite spies sent to mislead him. 
They released them and sent them off and said, ah, great, well, let's set up camp and relax. We've got plenty of time before the battle begins. The Pharaoh had fallen for a simple trick. Ramses goofed, seriously and badly, to have taken those two Bedouins at their word, to have avoided sending out scouts to check the veracity of what they were saying, I think was a terrible, terrible military mistake. Ramesses' soldiers captured two more spies. This time, Ramesses had them beaten and interrogated. He got a very different story. The Hittites were not hundreds of miles away. They were just across the river, ready to attack. In panic, Pharaoh sent word back for reinforcements. Suddenly, the Hittites attacked. Ramesses' scribes left an eyewitness account of the battle. 